Hello Culture and Leadership Connections listeners and our Patreon uh, listeners in particular because this video is just for you. And I have with me Monique Allen today who did the wonderful podcast about um, lifescaping and uh, her, her landscaping business and how that's allowed her to think about her life as being like a landscape. She wrote a wonderful book. I'm just going to show it to you. I have it right here. It's called, it even has a note on it saying send thank you note. <laughs> Stop <laughs> landscaping and start lifescaping, uh, which I have read the first paragraph for and I intend to read all the rest now. <laughs> And Monique, I'm really happy to have you with us here today and to hear you talk about your potager garden. What is yeah. a potager garden? What yes, <laughs> yes, thank you. Well, I'm I'm really excited to be back. I'm excited to be uh, here for your, your special group of, of uh, followers. And um, so a potager garden, potager, uh, is, um, it's a vegetable garden. It's a garden where we grow food but also a pollinator garden, an herb garden. Um, we're in the time of Halloween. It's the witch's garden. It's the space where um, uh, one would go for, for all of the culinary delights and the place where you would go to touch and bring nature in, whether it's to eat, to cook, uh, for medicine, um, so it's a really wonderful space and I'd love to share mine with you if I may. Please, um, please. We would so love what to I'll do it. is, uh, yeah, so I'll just share my screen here. Um, and I have several, um, shots just kind of, um, queued up here. And, um, for starters, okay. this one here is just kind of an overview of, <laughs> the garden. And as you can see, it's hyper stylized. So um, my garden in the early days was, um, it was a road out field garden. So very much like, um, uh, you know, uh, little raised mounds on the earth, and I would grow everything there. And um, I'm of a certain age and bending over and crawling around is not as comfortable as it used to be. And um, I want to work in my garden, but I also want to be in my garden. So um, I created this central patio, um, and that's a little fire pit in the in the front here. It's called a solo stove, just something you can order online. It doesn't uh, take a lot of money to have a fire pit, even though people will build beautiful ones. Those are Adirondack chairs, but made out of an ASEC material, so they can be out year round through the snow, they will not rot. <laughs> um, and so they last super long and I got them in this fun French blue. Um, and then as you look at this garden, you can just see that there's, there's just a lot going on. I have planters, I have food, I have flowers. Um, and you know, the beauty of this garden, this is just sort of, oops, this is just sort of another view kind of looking out is that um, this garden, um, had so much texture and sitting in these chairs and this is looking back out on my landscape. If I want to just come out and read, um, I can do that. I actually built this garden in February of 2020. We were very warm here in Massachusetts and, um, I had no idea we were having a pandemic. And so this ended up being such a saving grace because I visited with friends and family here. I had my kids out here. I had my kids have friends and have fire pits out here and be safe and physically distance yet socially close. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I've been struggling so much with social distancing. It's really mm -hmm. physical distancing because as human beings, we need social interaction. So the Pottinger Garden for me really makes it so that I can be in the landscape, I can be in nature, but I, I don't always have to be doing. And for those of us who are entrepreneurs, we are often caught up in the trap of doing. So true. And mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a little introduction. The two um, pictures down below I put in because I thought they would be um, super fun because these are, these are times where we're trying very hard to support our pollinators. This is my pollinator garden. Um, and it's phenomenal because it starts blooming uh, in late April and it will, it's still blooming and it's mm -hmm. almost November. And uh, these are my new residents. 
I just got two um, honeybee Jeez. hives. Yeah. And, um, and so this is sort of the next phase of the potager is to really expand it as a pollinator garden. And, you know, I'll just wrap up and then I'll answer any questions. But the reason why I think this is so important isn't because I think everybody's going to go out and build what I build here. It's that I believe that as doers, as makers, as people who move idea into manifest physical things, as people who race around with accountability to clients, to employees, to family, to home, if we don't stop and sit, um, we run the risk of burnout. We run the risk of being not so healthy ourselves. And as a business coach, one of the things that I work very closely on is I try very hard to get all of my entrepreneurs to think deeply about how they are working in their times of stillness, their times of being um, in conjunction with their doing. And if you don't have the ability to build a garden like this, there are amazing places that you can go to. Like in Mass, in, in the United States, we have the Trustees of Reservations, we have the Audubon Society, we have the Native Plant Trust, and I'm sure other countries have similar preserve, wildlife preserve and nature preserves. These are also great places to take your lunch instead of in front of your computer. <laughs> that's so that's advice. why, yeah. yeah. I love it. This is, it's so inviting. And it, it just, I, I also really like your idea that you can be in the garden instead of do the garden. Uh, my yard, as every time I go out into it, I love it. And then I look at the garden, I think, oh man, yes. weeds, harvesting, fixing this, fixing that. It, it doesn't it doesn't feel relaxing every time I direct my gaze towards the vegetable garden. I think, oh, that's so much work. I have to go and look at something else. <laughs> so I, I like the way you have this set up so that it feels that you can just be in it and enjoy it. And, and you will still have to work in it, but it doesn't feel like it's calling you to work. It's calling you to enjoy. Yeah. If I did close-ups of any of these gardens, you would see you know, the tomatoes that fell and need to be cleaned up, you'd see the leaf litter, you'd see the weeds, you know, you'd see the, the things that need tending. And um, I think one of the most important human practices is to understand how to be even when there's work to do. And I will tell you that that's an enormous struggle for me. Um, I struggle with being in my house because I always see something that needs to be cleaned or rearranged. And normally I'm kind of tired from being in my business. I don't know if you ever feel that way. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> so the idea is how do we set up our lives inside and outside so that we have the ability to put the doing that's necessary into our peripheral vision. And the potager has a way of doing that because it's an artful representation of the workspace. And so the space itself is conducive to stillness. And then if you want to hyper-focus and get into one of those beds, if you're tired sitting, which happens to me, you know, I sit for a short period of time and then I putter. Mm -hmm. And I think puttering is actually, especially for doers, very helpful. Yes. And the example I would give is if you ever get in your car and you realize that as you've driven for maybe five or 10 minutes, all of a sudden your mind opens up and you have ideas, mm -hmm, totally. it's be right? Totally. Because we're moving from what would be a more uh, kind of frontal lobe space of thinking to spatial and driving where we're thinking, you know, we want to survive, we want to stay safe, whatever. So it unlocks that thinking mind to be receptive. When it's you're also leading, automatic, when you're in the car, it's automatic. It's automatic, right? Yeah, so you, you don't have to think. And so you do think about stuff that you didn't think you'd think about, you know? Right, and yeah. it's less of an effortful thinking and more of a flow. It just happens. Just happens. And yeah. this happens when you've set up your landscape in such a way, or you bring yourself to a landscape. But in your own landscape, when you set it up, that weeding is no longer a chore, it's actually a break mm -hmm. and we do it for 15 minutes, just, you know, just enough. And then in the 15 minutes, you'll see the smile come. It's very nice. 
And for yeah. people that don't live in areas where they can have a garden, there are community gardens everywhere. And uh, yes. it is, it's really helpful and healing and, um, and healthy <laughs> to have a little bit of a space uh, somewhere for in a community garden and people really enjoy it. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. And a, a deck, a patio, a sunny window. I mm -hmm. used to be an apartment dweller and my- it Just be a couple of pots, right? Just a couple of pots mm -hmm. and they need love and tending too. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Monique, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I really, I really appreciated it. And uh, it gives me a new sense of how I can be in my garden and enjoy it without feeling that I must always work. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> Good, I'm glad, I'm glad. Thank you so much. I really love this little insight and it's such a breath of fresh air in the middle of the day. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, great.